Yo folks, welcome to your channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about Honkai Star Rail speculative release dates, Lunar New Year events, new gacha games, wall titles, and games coming to January Gacha News Weekly, and more. Let's jump right to it. So first things being is the Honkai Star Rail final beta signups. It's going to be starting January 24th, so make sure to get in on that. And let's talk about other things. So the previous beta was held June 2022, but signups ended in April. So April, June. So hopefully that means we have our beta sometime in February, if I was a speculative man. And then let's jump into more things. First things is the Honkai Star Rails CN publishing license. And you can actually check out an official government site where it says, Honkai Star Rail as of January 17th, 2023 is now officially published or, you know, approved within the CN government. That is big because not a lot of games get approved and Zenless Zone Zero, for example, will not be playable until we get the CN license for it. Alchemy Stars is actually on this list and we'll talk about it a little bit later. But more on Honkai Star Rail, the Discord server is actually up. You can get in there, chat with folks and send your memes, you know, spread your artwork, send your content and everything. But I think that's just going to be a really cool way to interact, get like the latest announcements faster than Twitter or just as fast as Twitter. So make sure to definitely join the Discord and get on top of that. And with that being said, Honkai Star Rail, I think the Spectre release dates I want to say is maybe four to six months from now, the releases will maybe be happening. But I want to say for sure, or at least 99% sure, Honkai Star Rail will be releasing in 2023. Why is that? Because this game, I feel like they wanted it to release in 2022 and then they didn't get their license approved and it just didn't happen. So now with the delays all ending, Honkai Star Rail, it's gonna be in the betas and playables and everything. Hopefully four to six months from now, we'll be able to play. So Limbus Company released their new Sanity and EGO mechanics. The reason why that's so important is because Sanity is going to be acting like sort of like a darkest dungeon factor. If you don't know what that means, essentially when you kill opponents, your characters or sinners, they'll be getting more benefits. They'll be happier. They'll actually be able to stay in battle. And then the more allies die, there will be huge negative compounding effects where statuses will go down or sometimes they might not even attack. And then with this EGO system, there's going to be, you know, the seven deadly sins, seven different resistances but it also adds like a berserker or like a sinner mechanic where they can get stronger, but they'll start attacking their allies. And I think that's just really cool that Limbus Company is going to be a different style RPG. You know, seven different resistances, obviously that's a lot. I don't think that's uncommon, but the biggest thing is like the berserker and sort of like this sanity system or the EGO sanity system. That is not common whatsoever in gotcha games whatsoever, specifically in the turn-based genre. So more Limbus Company hype stuff I just want to talk about. And then Zoldout, it's going to be launching on both PC and mobile January 26th. I'm not sure, but I think you can play or at least see some gameplay bits on Steam right now. Non-grid tactical RPG. It's going to have like card play based mechanics to it. So make sure to check it out. And then we also have a five stars. This is going to be releasing as of January 25th. We're going backwards over here. And this is going to be a three by three tactical RPG or three by three auto grid RPG. In case you want to check out something different. Next up, we have various day life. That's going to be on January 23rd. That's going to be the release dates for it. This is probably going to be a somewhat okay RPG. This was actually originally a phone game. So in case you saw like Nintendo stuff on it, I don't think it should have released on the Switch, but then again, the Switch gets a lot of like sort of mobile entries. Anyways, it's a decent RPG that you can get into in case you want something to spice it up. But with that being said, I don't think Various Day Life is gonna be a gotcha, just your normal RPG in case you wanted something like that. And then we got the Grand Saga global version being confirmed by the NPixel co-founder saying that, yes, it's going to be coming, it's gonna be playable, and it's not the NFT version. So that's really good. And I thought the Grand Saga was actually pretty fun. You can check out my first impressions on the channels. And then we also have Kingdom Hearts Missing Link the CBTs showed some crazy info. This is going to be a GPS style game. So Pokemon Go, except Kingdom Hearts on top of it, which is really crazy. So you're going to be capturing like different checkpoints around like the world and stuff. Well, it's only in JP for now. Hopefully it gets a global version, but you know, they released it like to the masses in an English language. So I'm assuming it's going to be global. 
but check it out there's gonna be enemies and all sorts of things and then from what the ceo said the game is only 50 percent done so we're probably gonna be waiting a couple years for this to be properly finished or at least you know maybe a couple more months until we get like more infos on this kingdom hearts missing link it's looking really good to me so far and then we got the Ikemen Villains. It's going to be up for pre-registrations in case you want an Otome or Sim style game. It's going to be from like more of an Otome game series style. So you're probably going to see more news on that front. So maybe if it's going to be like Twisted Disney Wonderland, that would be cool. And then we got World 2. There's going to be a new trailers on it. There's going to be like an Isekai bus attack, which is kind of interesting. Overall, I'm pretty like spectacle like hype on it i'm not sure how to feel because the art style is not for me but more to come as we get more into it then we have the new dragon quest rpg i am surprised disappointed this is going to be like fortnite and i didn't know if i wanted that it's actually going to be turn-based so not like your looter shooter sort of style and i think that's going to be very different and eye-opening because there's never been like a tactical or rpg style fortnite style game or you know PUBG style game so i am going to wait at bated breath whether this is going to be good or not but we'll see i don't really enjoy these games hopefully it does better than you know the final fantasy 7 first soldier game i think that's what it was called and then we got Nintendogs possibly debuting to mobile devices. This is a leak patent. So, you know, whether this is going to be happening soon or not, maybe in 2023, that's looking good. Nintendogs was part of my childhood and it's probably going to be more of a mobile game, not a gotcha. Unless you can roll for like different dogs, that would be really interesting. Then we also have Weibo. This is going to be a Splatoon inspired game. It did really well on its demos. It's going to have AR and VR. I like Splatoon. I think this could be a cool mobile gacha game or if it has gacha mechanics where you summon for heroes or like guns. I'm not entirely sure. It's just really cool to see something different in the spaces. We also have Zeta Prophecy. This is going to be a turn based RPG. Just want to talk about it briefly because it looks pretty cool from the screenshots and, you know, something a little bit different to spice it up and you can play it right now. Next up, we have the events. First things is the Lunar New Year's happening in Azure Lane. Also the Winter Pathfinder event. Check it out, Azure Lane, one of the most free to play waifu gotcha collectors out there, if not the one to play in my opinion, because you know, sometimes Nikkei, it can be a little bit rough on the monetization fronts. And we also have a fit or the Fire Emblem Heroes, the Engage collab currently occurring. Check out the waifus and whatnot in there. And we have the Senren Kagura Shin Ikitosen collabs occurring. You got pretty spicy waifus, you know, right there. I gotta say, nurse outfits and everything. You know, Shin Ikitosen, definitely not a wholesome anime, if you know what I mean. And we have the Blue Archive. They are up for pre registrations on the business trip to Momo Yodo event or Momo Yodo. I'm not sure how to say it. Correct me in the comments as you guys do. And last, Claudia announcing collab with Bayonetta. Hopefully we get to see, you know, the Bayonetta waifus and all of their glory on January 26th. And we have Tower of Fantasy 2.3, February 2nd. That's going to be a new update. And there's also a Lunar New Year's happening in Tower of Fantasy in case you want to check that out. And Fate Grand Order introduces Nito Chris Alter. Looking pretty clean right there. And we got the Alchemy Stars CN pre-registration now. So as soon as they got their license approval, they went straight into the pre-registers. And I feel like this is going to be releasing within the next couple of months in the CN region. Alchemy Stars definitely needs that kind of kick. And honestly, it's doing really well with all of its events. And War of the Visions happening its Lunar New Year's as well as of now and entering January 31st. So make sure to check it out. Free polls and all sorts of stuff there. And Lunar New Year also happening in Legend Clover. Remember, this is an NSFW title. So free summons and all the things go a long way here. And there's the Princess Connect second year anniversary currently occurring, free pulls and all. Not to mention Princess Pecorine is absolutely broken. Now we got the Genshin Hoyoverse news coming up. And first things, Genshin Impact, it got its map and enhancement progression calculators. So it's gonna be easier to play the game and progress. And we also have Mika, who's going to be a cryo character that got teased out. Pretty decent looking boy, clean. And we also have the Haya. 
She's going to be the waifu to collect a pyro. I don't know if she's going to be overpowering Hu Tao because Hu Tao is broken. And if someone's stronger than Hu Tao, that's mega broken. And you can check out their animations. You know, they're leaked on YouTube. I'm not going to show them. And we also have the revenues for Genshin's. Look at Nahida pulling it up and then Raiden and Ayato or Shogun Raiden. They are going to be the ones cleaning it up as far as 35 million. That is or almost 36 million. That's a lot of money. And we have the IRL events to close things off. First things, Arc Knights devs Hyper Griff is issuing a cease and desist or they're suing the crap out of oldest NFT because they copy their trailer. Like, come on, NFT games getting sued because they copy stuff belligerently. That's a common tread, unfortunately, with that space. We also have Krafton freezing their salary or CEO's salaries and organizational leaders so they can make means ends. I think that's pretty inspirational because a lot of gacha games or just mobile titles, they just, you know, tank it. They're like, we're gonna just cut everything off. They never go after themselves, you know, the big dog. So that is really cool to see. We also have the CN government buying Tencent stonks. So, you know, maybe Tencent's gonna be more involved in that thing. But let's end off on a high. Things are looking pretty spicy with the gacha life cycle right here. We got a reroll and then we got to uninstall and then we got a new gacha game and then we install. I know I skipped the like install portion, but let's be honest, as soon as we get into the game, we re-roll. At least, you know, gotcha gamers like me who are kind of broke and, uh, you know, we, we want to squeeze like as much gameplay as possible. And, you know, the neuron activation and everything, you know, it, like re-rolling is like summoning, you know what I mean? That's the thing for me. But yeah, that's going to be the week of gotcha on this one. The Honkai Star Rail releases is honestly something I've been looking forward to. I thought it was going to happen in 2022, but for sure, 99% sure it's going to be happening in 2023. Hopefully in the next four to six months, I'm really hyped for it. Limbus Company looks ever so great every single time I look at it. And we have a lot of releases this week. And you know, Zolda, I think it's going to be the worthy one to try out. You know, play it on PC, play it on Steam, play it on your Android or phone devices, whatever you do. But anyways, if you made it this far in today's video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram if you want to see my adventures. I just went snowboarding and, you know, did another con. <laughs> Once we hit 40k subs, we'll be doing a giveaway. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I appreciate it. If you can check out the gamer subs link down in the description, it always helps the channel. But yeah, have yourself a fantastic day and see you guys in the next one.